Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Satyajit Patnaik here. In this video, we shall be talking about the learning path of a data scientist. Many people have asked me, what does a data scientist do in his regular day-to-day -day activities? So this video will give you an idea of how the journey of a data scientist looks like and what are the different steps that a data scientist or a machine learning engineer performs in companies. So this video is all about that. Of course, the follow up videos will be on various machine learning topics because as I had already told you that the entire machine learning playlist is ready, but just waiting for 20,000 subscribers. The moment I touch that, I'll make all these materials free of cost and freely available on my channel. For this particular video, let's get started. Hi. In this video, we shall be talking about the learning path of a data scientist. Now, I already created a very similar video long back, but now I want to add some more points to it. So this video will definitely help you to understand on how a data scientist works and what are the different steps basically that a data scientist goes through or a machine learning engineer goes through. So if you go through this video end to end, you will definitely have a better understanding and you will also be visualizing how a data scientist works. You can just close your eyes, follow this video and I'm pretty much sure you will understand each and everything. Now, the first thing which is most important for a data scientist is going to be understanding the business problem. Now, what is the business problem? Again, in this video, I shall be taking some examples. So I will be taking my special example, which is telecom, because I come from telecom background, major of majority of my experience comes from telecom itself. So I will be taking telecom example. So just imagine I have joined a company, the company is XYZ. Business understanding is must. So if you are not having a domain knowledge of telecom, which is still okay, but most of the companies prefer people having the domain experience. Okay. Now, if you don't have the domain experience, you can still gain the domain experience by doing some research, going through multiple blogs, understanding the line of businesses and so many things. So just imagine the first step, the very first step is always business understanding. After business understanding, what we usually do is as a data scientist, we talk to higher management teams or we talk to sales team or we talk to um, if we have an access to the clients or the customers, we also talk to them and try to understand their problem. So I'll take a quick example. A small example is I have joined a company and I have a meeting with my higher management and my sales team. Now they basically tell me about multiple problems. So they tell me that, you know what? So our customer retention is very high, sorry, very low. Customer retention is very low, which means a lot of people are churning the company. The customer churn ratio is very high. Customer churn percentage is very high. This is one of the problems. Another problem is uh, maybe there are some issues. We need to do some sentiment analysis or can we do some analysis related to customer complaints or something like that. So your company or your higher management, if you don't have a data science team, the first brainstorming will be on what can be done. Now, if you already have a data scientist, data science team, and you're joining a company, then definitely you will get the briefing from your team lead or your team manager. They will already be knowing about these problems. But if I talk about the entire learning path, it all starts with business understanding and then selecting the right types of problem to solve. Now, for example, you jot down some case studies or jot, da jot it down some points. Let's say customer churn percentage is high sentiment analysis on uh, um, complaint data. And let's say you also want to do some call detail analysis. And you also want to do some customer segmentation so that you can understand 
what are the different segments of customers based on which you can focus and provide them some good offers okay so customer segmentation also is an option now the next step is picking success measures what does that mean which basically means you discuss with your team we discuss with your higher management and you as a data scientist tell them that oh you know what all these things are possible using ai we can simply create a machine learning algorithm or something like that you pitch them that these are the things possible apart from that you know what we can also do something related to x something related to y something related to z that means you are telling that these are the seven areas where my team can probably focus and create some models or give you some insights after that there will be a iterative discussion with your higher management with you and they will be prioritizing which has the highest cost impact now just imagine your manager says or your higher management says that the first priority should be getting this churn percentage as low as possible so this will be my first priority and rest is up to you you can pick it as per your priority level so this is where the data science team understands that oh we have to work in this particular use case for the time being so that's where your collection of data starts data collection starts what is data collection that means you talk to different teams and try to collect data another thing to explore in this particular point is data collection could be one of the could be very difficult task because data collection is one of the tedious tasks in a data science life you know learning path if you are working for a startup then you could probably ask the data to your clients if you are working for a startup where you don't have a client then you probably have to scrape data if you are working in a big company like a mnc company in that case you probably have to uh, probably have to talk to different teams and try to get data there could be one team who is the owner of there could be one team who is the owner of one type of data probably customer details and there could be another team who is the owner of customer complaint data another team customer uh, usage data so this is where you need to talk to multiple teams get the data accumulate them and then combine them so this is all about collection and preparation of data after preparation of data this is where your first official task starts which is nothing but understanding the data in other terms in statistical terms we call it as exploratory data analysis we start understanding the data what the data is telling me do we have any insights how many type of people do we have what is the percentage of the gender how many males how many females how many are of this type how many are of that type we do all sorts of eda in case you are new to eda you don't know anything about eda probably you can check out my eda video which is almost like two and a half years video two and a half hours long video and that video will also be provided in the description below you can check it out after understanding comes the next step which is feature engineering now what is feature engineering in simple terms of course if you don't know anything about machine learning probably you will not be able to understand this but in simple terms what is features features means your number of columns that we have let's say you have you have captured multiple data you have captured customer id age gender location contract type bandwidth and so on etc etc these all are your features customer id age gender location these are all your features and feature engineering is a step where what we do is we try to select certain features for the model and we reject certain features so there are some techniques under feature engineering called as feature selection and some techniques called as feature extraction that we perform which right now it will be a little bit difficult for you to understand but i'll have a separate video on that as so very soon okay so in short these are some features and feature engineering is a step 
where we understand which features are important, which are not, which features should we use it for the model, which features to ignore, right? Now, if you are thinking that, why do we have to remove some features? So that could be a very good question. If that is the question you are asking to yourself, I'll try to answer that as well. Now, what happens is in machine learning, ultimately machine learning is nothing but a computer, right? You're processing your data into a computer. You are building your mo models in your computer, right? So ultimately you're passing the data to your systems. The more features you have, it could be computationally expensive and it could be memory expensive as well. So what we do is we do some feature engineering steps and try to understand, can we cut down the number of features and still have the same accuracy or not, or still have the same performance or not. This is what we do in feature engineering. And let's say we are able to succeed in that part. For example, initially you had 20 features and you are probably getting 91% accuracy. Now you have 10 features with 90% accuracy. Now you can see you have almost reduced 50% of the features and just compromised 1% of accuracy. Do you think you should take a call like this? Should you proceed with 10 features or 20 features? Again, this is going to be a data scientist's call and it all depends from industry to industry. Like in AI, uh, sorry, in healthcare, we are more focused on accuracies. So in that case, probably I'll just use my features, all the features. Let's say we're talking about some other domain, then probably accuracy is not my first priority. Probably computational power is going to be my first priority. So I'll cut down my features. Again, it's going to be your call. After feature engineering, that's where your main step starts, model building. Now model building is normally done by a machine learning engineer. Okay, so a machine learning engineer creates models. Your model could be multiple models like decision trees, random forest, this, that, this, that. You could build 10 models, M1, M2, M3, M4, multiple models. After model building, you have to explore your models. What does that mean? That means simply you create a model M1, you create a model M2, you create a model M3 and so on. This could be a decision tree classifier. This could be a random forest classifier. This could be a KNN classifier, something like that. Now this is giving you 80% accuracy. This is giving you 85. This is giving you 83. Okay. In this phase, you have to analyze which is good, which is bad. So finding rapid insights is basically understanding what your model is telling you. Then comes evaluating models where you evaluate and finalize which models to go ahead, which models to not. And then let's say this model is probably giving me good results. What I can do is I will perform some hyper parameter tuning on this model and try to increase the accuracy to 90% or 92% or whatever accuracy is possible. Okay. So this is all about model building, exploring models, finding rapid insights and evaluating models. After that comes your model iteration and model deployment. Now let's say your random forest was selected. Then you performed a hyperparameter tuning and you finally achieved a 90% accuracy. What we do is we deploy the model. So the model is deployed, but what is model iteration or model iteration? Now model iteration is simply normally what we do is let's say you deployed your model. And just imagine your model was trained from December 2019, sorry, Jan 2019 till December 2021, for an example, three years. Okay, I'll mark it as dot, dot, dot. And you have deployed this model on Jan 2022. You have deployed this model. Okay, now just imagine the model is performing well. After three months, the model started deteriorating. That means the accuracy changed from 90% to 85%. Why? Because remember the model is trained between this data. Model is not trained on the new data. So there could be some new information, which is 
which is a part of the testing data. That means the model is predicting on this data, but there are some information which might not be there in the training data. There could be some new insights. So it is always advisable. If you see the model deteriorating, what we do is we take back, we retrain the model again, do the entire process and then again, finalize which model to use, which model to not use. And then we again redeploy it. So this is a complete iteration phase that happens in the machine learning path or the deep learning or anything. This is the entire data science picture. That's all about this particular topic on learning path. I hope you understood each and every topic about learning path. We will definitely make sure that we create videos on each of these topics so that you understand the entire machine learning pipeline and so many topics, so many videos are coming up uh, very soon on this channel. Please comment in the channel if you like it, whatever requirements you have, please comment down. If you like it, if you don't like it, please comment down and and you can also comment down what's your background, what type of videos do you want from my channel. That's all about uh, this particular video. In case you like it, please like and like, share and subscribe the channel and press the bell icon to get notified on my future videos. See you in the next video. Bye bye. Thanks for supporting me and supporting my channel, guys. And in case you have any questions, any comments, anything, please comment down in the video below so that I can get back to you as soon as possible. I'm already working on a lot of requests right now. Power BI projects, Tableau projects, machine learning playlists. So many things are going on right now. So make sure you support me and share my channel with your friends and stay tuned for my next contents. Thank you.